come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, the movie review podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination, which we need your help with. Why don't you oh. go over and hit that like or subscribe button wherever you found us. Be our army. That's right, because all of that will help us become the fastest growing podcast in the dark In the moors. Universe. Yep. In the moors. <laughs> These the are moors. the internet Radio superstar. Holly. Sean. Michaela. And I'm Colin, and tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by... Colin! Did you choose this movie, or was this movie... This movie chose, chose me, Sean. you. Yeah. I feel like it has. Yeah. Indeed. Based on yeah. its history. What do we watch tonight? We watched The Wolfman. The Wolfman! That's right. Not The Wolfman. No. That's the 1941 movie. Yeah. We watched The Wolfman. Mm-hmm. That's the 2010 that sounds, movie. It's like Kyle Wolfman. Kyle yeah, Wolfman. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Benicio de Wolfman. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, it is a kind of a weird thing that they went with that, but that must be to distinguish them when you're looking through the uh, IMDb. Had listing. they only waited like eight more years, it would, they could have realized it wouldn't have mattered. You could just call it the Wolfman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Based on Halloween and every <laughs> right. horror movie that ever came out. <laughs> right. Like, There's no rules They were worried anymore. for no reason. Mm-hmm. There's no That's rules right. anymore. No, no rules anymore. This is before we were doing Dark Universes and before the Marvel Universe, and this was a standalone movie, a remake of the 1941 movie Universal Monster Movie, mm. The Wolfman. Starring... Benicio del Toro, an unlikely choice for I was lead say, man in a. Where were we at in the world of Benicio? Because I feel like he wasn't like s- star power at this point. Like no, I mean, he was, definitely he, not. Like he was, I disagree. He's, he's like Oscar winner and everything at this he's point. Great, but he's not like a list. Like his star was still rising at this point. Really, I, I feel like this I is know, the I first thing I remember known. seeing him headline. See, that's I, I can't decide because I'm like it's Benicio del Toro. Obviously, he's, yeah, he's, he's, he's well known. He's yeah, well known. But yeah. also, but when did it start? But yeah. also, like. At. It still seems like a, like an odd lead to me. I, I know. know. Yeah, no, I thought so, too. Yeah. And I thought that was also one of the things with Universal pinning like this massive $150 million movie on Benicio Del Toro. You yeah, know I mean? that's what I mean. It's, um, it doesn't make sense to me. Before this, there was Che, part two, mm-hmm. and then Che, part one. Which nobody saw those, right? Are we saying that was like an, I saw it, but I had to watch it for a class. I was I was say, that oh, okay. Like a it was like four fighter. hours long. Yeah, it yeah, it's it's a it's a two pack Criterion set because it's so yeah. fucking long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Long one. Uh, things we lost in the fire in two thousand seven. Oh, Sin City. Sin City in two thousand five. Yeah. 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 Was he was he in Babel? Twenty one grams. The Hunted. You guys oh, not traffic. remember the Hunted? Or traffic, traffic, traffic. 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 That's what yeah. I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember the hunted him. Yeah, and, I remember. Uh, yeah. Tommy Lee Jones. Yeah, that's why I think this was on yeah. like the kind of the downward curve of his. And the last Maybe time that I remember yeah. seeing him in a what big was, what was that shit movie? movie he did with Alicia Silverstone? That's the other one. Yeah, it was like a romantic comedy deal. Well, Joyride? Was he frozen in time or something? Nah. They went through like a time what? machine no. deal. I don't recall no. this movie at all. Okay. No. I, I'm no. talking Man. about the wrong thing. That is way more complicated okay. than Excess this. baggage? That's it. Okay. Oh, Excess baggage. Excess baggage. <laughs> I forgot about I'm that. I'm thinking of the Brendan Fraser no, movie. No, it's like a fake kidnapping gone wrong. Oh, right, it's, right, right. Yeah, right, right. it's a shit movie. Yeah. yeah. So he's an odd choice to play I think this. There's a lot of odd choices yeah. as far as casting goes in this. Yeah? Yeah. Who else is in this movie? Anthony Hopkins. That's the other odd choice, I would say. I think like to play a father son role, it's not odd. Yeah, evil evil sense. old British man with father son it, issues and tracks for me. Yeah, it yeah. makes sense. It's and just, he got it. It had to be yeah. because he was in Bram Stoker's Dracula, right? right? Is he the guy I you go to? So. It's like you're gonna put, we're gonna remake an old. Yeah. If you want a monologue evil old man, this is what who yeah, you cast. He's more like sense. a monotony evil old man. That's yeah, the thing. that's the thing. Like the casting makes sense, but he's not giving it what it needs. Well, I mean, I feel like he was yeah, like that in Westworld too, you know. Yeah, I, I, I think this is what he does, honestly. Uh, well, I think, yeah, and then he this hit is a what he does. Where it was really great and worked, which was Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, yeah, and but yeah. then it's just he, like, and then he he's coasted very on that for the rest of his career. From now on, like, mm-hmm. I, like well, he's yell. doing a lot of things in this movie where I, I like, I respect the choices. I see what you're saying because they come off like he's not really emoting much at all, right? Right, and especially I, I, because like what's actually going on in that guy's head is this like fiery love for his uh, son's uh, wife, 
Yeah, right? right. And he is like, There's uh, nothing fiery about this performance. Oh, yeah, yeah. No. Well, yeah, I know. Because but, except for the end. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, ah, But this is, I guess, maybe this is like part of what the theme of but, werewolf you know, movies say, is like, supposed see, to be. I see what they're going because there's even that part in the movie where he's like, Look at my eyes. They're dead. Like, I'm dead. There's nothing there. And I'm like, Okay, but you don't have to play it the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? But it's well, like, should the, be a revelation. The other you're dead. side yeah. of him, the, the, so that's the like the repressed, civilized version, yeah. right? And the beast is uh, yeah. eventually he's like, I should have let this thing out the whole time. Okay, so we're spoiling <laughs> this movie. Yeah, we're we'll, probably we'll going to spoil several we'll other werewolf it. movies. Yeah. As Emily we Blunt go. is also in this movie. That's right. Yeah. Who's kind of Emily Blunt. her voice sounds way different, does it not? Then. I think then she's now, doing a like I feel like she speaks well, she's doing deeper a different now. British accent, I believe. I think which she, is weird because she's British, right? But I think she's there's maybe there's a dialect. I know, yeah. but like From way back when. I, well, I, th- I think one of it is is she's talking very quiet in this movie. Yeah, she's yes. very somber. Yeah, and she's not always. Everyone's just, very somber. This is a very somber movie. Yes, it is. It just yeah. sounds like she's speaking higher than her, like how we hear her speak now. Her voice be. seems deeper now. I think. I think it's movie. the softness. Yeah. I think yeah. that's what it is. She's yeah. kind of engendered herself to uh, like uh, horror and sci-fi movie audiences, mm-hmm. right over the years. Yeah, yeah. It's she's not a just, genre queen. Yeah, I mean, we're with mm-hmm. like Quiet Place and all that. I was trying tomorrow. to think if she's on the wall yet because I know Looper. I was like, Looper, mm-hmm. this have we done anything else at some point? Sunshine cleaning at some point, maybe. I don't, I don't so. know. Dan in real life. <laughs> All these coming soon. Oh, um, well, I mean, there's obviously other people. We didn't mention who directed the movie. Uh, it's Joe Johnston. Joe Johnston. Um, Rocketeer. This movie was apparently a train wreck in its uh, production. Mm-hmm. So it fun. had been... Who was the original director? Uh, it was Mark Romanek. Yep. You know Mark mm-hmm. Romanek? He's, He's a music video stuff, director. Some... The only real thing of note that he did was a movie with Robin Williams called One Hour Photo. Yes. Oh, oh, yeah. He wrote and directed a, that. I've had that on my list to I bring to the freak too. show for a long time. Yeah. It's like, because uh, uh, they edit memories. It's like a yeah. futuristic movie. But it's one of those low-key futuristic. Yeah. No, no, no. That's not One Hour Photo. That's not photo. it. That's a different Robin Williams movie. That's yeah. Final yeah. Cut. Oh, it's yeah, Final Cut. Yeah, that's Final Cut. Oh, one hour, one photo hour photo is where, is where he works glasses. at the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. right, right. The odd character. Yeah. yeah. Yep. yep, okay. So he had directed that one, and mm. then they said, you should do The Wolfman. And then, so they hired him, and they hired Andrew Kevin Walker, mm. the writer of Seven. Yes. And, uh, well, he also did, like, a bunch of David Fincher movies or did rewrites on, mm-hmm. like, even Fight Club and stuff like yeah. that, and also had his foot in... Uh, gothic horror movies with uh, Sleepy Hollow, yeah. sure. right? So he wrote the script, and it's like, okay, we're gonna go. And so Universal starts building all these sets, and they're spending a ton of money on this movie. And at some point, Universal's like, we want, we kind of want the movie to go this way. And Mark Romanek's like, I want it to go this way. And so they part company. Mm-hmm. And so then it's like, well, what do you do? You've when already invested all this four uh, weeks away from production starting, and you've invested all this money. Yep. Yeah. And so then you bring in you call Joe, Joe Johnston, Johnston. Mm-hmm. right? Um, so that's what he does. Yeah, because he did. Well, later he did. Um, he's directed some good movies. I'm sorry, oh no, I, I like agree. Joe he's Johnston. He's directed some good movies. Rocketeer, mm-hmm. uh, Captain America: World The First 3. Avenger, Jurassic World yeah. Three, Captain America. Yeah. And, well, that was afterwards. They brought Hugo Weaving with him from yeah, this. Yeah, I think yeah. to be the Red Skull. I was like, um, I him. Yeah. Didn't he do Honey I Shrunk the Kids? Was I that so. the Joe Johnston movie? Joe Johnston's. Does he have a recognizable style as a director? He always has that one camera move that goes really fast to something mundane for no reason. Like in this in this movie, it was like Emily Blunt lighting a candle and it mm-hmm. like zoomed in real fast on her hand and then panned out really fast mm. for no reason. Like it was just her lighting a candle. There's always a shot like that. Mm. But that's all I can think of as far as Joe Johnston style. Yeah, because Hidalgo. I- yeah, oh, that movie was Dragon awful. Park Three, October Sky, nineteen ninety five. Oh, Jumanji. I'll yeah. give him that one. Yeah, but I mean, mm-hmm. again, the he's, page he's, master. He's like uh, Joe Johnston to me is like uh, he's not like a director with a, a singular vision. No. he's a craftsman, but he yeah. must be really good at it. Like mm-hmm. this movie is he's actually, I think, uh, like an example of that that they were able to bring him in. And didn't have to change the shooting schedule. Four weeks out, mm-hmm. he was somehow able to take this thing over, shoot it on schedule, yeah. on time, and on budget, get the movie done. That's and it's amazing. Like, he's like, how do you do that? Yeah, yeah. when somebody he's else like has a, planned all this he's shit like a out. Consultant that you bring into your company to clean shit up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's the yeah. fixer. Yeah, he is, the he fixer. is. He's like the Hollywood he really fixer. Is. Yeah. yeah. He is. 
Um, or oh, what's that Kira Sedgwick show? The Closer. The Closer. The closer. The closer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I read the original Kevin or Andrew Kevin Walker draft of this, mm-hmm. and it is a very different movie. Is it? In what ways? Um, well, I'm trying to remember exactly now, but I don't believe that um, the father character, Sir John, was the climactic werewolf. I believe that um, Ben, the brother, uh, is the werewolf. There was I also a that, lot more yeah. to do with like the gypsies and stuff like that. Um, they brought in David Self to rewrite it. Yeah. And... I mean, it had like, I think, four release dates. You know, it was supposed to come out in uh, like 2008, maybe, mm-hmm. in 2009, yeah. and then finally yeah. came out in 2010. I remember I lived in LA around this time, and so I'd drive past the Warner Brothers lot, and this poster was up there for a long time. <laughs> they did a really weird thing in the promotion of this movie, which I think in hindsight was a bad thing. Um, they they, showed they the hired... Mon- they the shit out of the monster? Yeah, in the posters. Yeah, because yeah, they, they had hired Rick Baker. This right? is an action movie, Colin. You gotta... Well, I think... See, I think that's part of Universal's retinkering. Mm, of yep. it. I mean... Mm-hmm. And I'm saying before they started shooting, they, they wanted to go that way. And I'm, I'm trying to... Because I don't know for sure what happened. Mm. So that's why every time I watch the movie, I'm trying to like glean like, like where oh, was that? that moment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of like uh, um, tinkering that I can see when I watch it now that I'm like, mm. oh, that scene, that scene went a completely different way. And they're just using like they're cutting on these lines. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they're filling in the rest with ADR. And I'm like, they manufactured this scene in the editing room. Oh, yeah. I guess it's cut to Walter ribbons. Merch. Uh, well, yeah. You know, Walter Merch came comes on. Saved this movie and did apparently a lot of work yeah. on it. Um, and Danny Elfman, I guess, did the score. You can tell. For it. Yeah. Plinks, but other people. everywhere. Yeah. But other people came in and uh, there were additions to his score. Well, because they, the they eventually, after the movie was done and he did the score, which owes a huge debt to the uh, Wojciech uh, Kilar score to uh, Bram Stoker's mm-hmm. Dracula. Yeah, for sure. Um, they they recut the movie and made it shorter, and then mm-hmm. Elfman's music didn't fix fit, so they brought in another guy to do a completely new score. Mm-hmm. And then that one was electronic or something. Mm-hmm. It didn't fit, so they oh, threw that out, yeah. brought in other people to like compose new stuff to make Elfman's stuff fit. Yeah. Wow. So, like, like, this is a patchwork. Oh, yeah. Does it feel like Sewn that when together. you watch it? It's not that apparent. Like, no. there are parts that, like, the editing is a little iffy. I can feel it but... in the editing throughout this movie, different parts, that it was, it just, it's. I'll give you an example of a together. scene that I did not catch until this time. I always knew there was something wrong with it. <laughs> this time I figured it out. All right. Toward the end of the movie, yes. Gwen has like, I'm going to save you, right? Yes. And she's looking through the books and she's uh-huh. figuring out like how to cure werewolfism. And she's looking for the old lady. And so finally yep. she meets the old lady and the old lady basically goes like, there's no cure. Yep. <laughs> yep. She's like, well, what do I have to do? You got to go kill him. Yep. yep. And I'm like, that whole scene is manufactured. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That was not supposed to. What I don't know what the hell they're talking about or where that came from yeah, in the right. movie, but that is manufactured just to cover a, a change in the in the plot. Right. Because I, mean, mm-hmm. I don't know if like the whole. I mean, there was a rumor at the time. I can't confirm this. There was a rumor that they were doing reshoots, and the reshoots involved two werewolves fighting and i'm like well that would mean that you redid the entire last act of the movie right <clears throat> but to do that you'd have to change like so much well, see, this is the of thing. the plot you ever, you ever when what uh, i found sometimes when i'm when i'm editing if i fix one part of something long later in the edit it, the, the ripple effects go backwards yes and yeah. something if you like and if you don't go back and fix them to line up with the thing that you're going with, it can make the rest of it feel like off. Yes, I deal. I deal with that with my clients all the time, like doing motion graphics. They'll be like, "Well, can you just add this extra scene in a minute in?" Okay, that shifts the timeline for the entire runtime of the. Yeah, yeah. I have to adjust everything in around the front that. That worked before. Yep. Now they now don't. They don't. Now I gotta yeah. fix them a little bit. And they think it's just like copy and paste, and it's no. It shifts everything, mm-hmm. like you said, the ripple effect, and like it's hard to know that if you haven't been on the editing side. I guess. Yeah, right, you know? yeah, but, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what it feels like. So it feels like they they're the in the process of all this, they're changing things. They're trying to make the movie something else. Yeah, and mm-hmm. it. 
kind of misaligns the rest of the movie somehow. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I think that probably also like contributes to the massive budget. I mean, 150 probably, oh yeah. million dollars for Ooh. a monster movie. You know, I mean, I should be so lucky, right? right? I was like, I was like, we didn't know how good we had it back then. Like, that'll never this happen again. I know. It was on a Wolfman movie yeah. for me. I yeah. Know, yeah, yeah, that's what it felt like. I mean, this is yeah. like one of those oh, man, things. They that, love me. Yeah, they ne- they never do this, and they, this is like a, a rare artifact. And now uh, that Marvel and Disney are the way they are, it'll never happen again. The best you're going to get is Werewolf by Night. You're going to get a little short on yeah. Disney Plus. That's all you're going to get now. I know because uh, you know, like you know, well, I know Guillermo del Toro was going to do uh, the H.P. Lovecraft story at the Mountains of Madness, mm-hmm. and that was like a hundred million dollar thing. And he had James Cameron and Tom Cruise, and they shit canned that, you know, because mm-hmm. it's like I don't know if we can make money back on these things. I mean, that's the the going thing with horror movies now. Seems to be like you shoot the thing for you know two hundred fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars, like Terrifier two, yeah, and mm-hmm. then it makes any money at the at the theater. Theaters and it's like a huge success, you right. know. So they don't usually gamble that much studio mm-hmm. cash on uh, on on projects like this. Um, there's also, well, okay, I guess we'll get to some other scenes where I was like, okay, they did some tinkering there, but uh, but what I guess what I was talking about earlier. So um, Rick Baker, right? And for those of you, everybody knows who Rick Baker is. I'm sure who's listening to this. Um, was the guy who basically like put his stamp on movie werewolves. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right? Because I think he won, this is the first Oscar for makeup effects was uh, him winning for American Werewolf in London. That was mm-hmm. the first time they ever did the Oscar for makeup effects and he won it. And he did the transformation for Thriller, mm-hmm. which... I mean, basically, it's the same technology as American yeah. Werewolf in London. The scene shot very similar. And then he was the werewolf guy, so they brought him back for Wolf. Oh, yeah. Wow. When they did the Jack Nicholson I was thinking werewolf about that movie. When we were watching yeah. yeah. That's a Rick Baker design. Yeah. And, I haven't uh, seen that in a while. And the Wolf Man. You know, he actually, I guess, like campaigned. Oh yeah, he wanted this when they when he heard about it because uh, it was the Wolf Man and, and Frankenstein are like his two. That's what. Got him into wanting to do makeup effects for movies and shit. Yeah, he's very. So he like was a, all for it. Yeah, a classic Universal monsters kind of guy. And you're like, you're Universal's making the Wolf Man. Like, I got to be a part of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you haven't, uh, if none of you f- uh, follow him on Instagram, mm-hmm. he, he posts follow? some oh, some great stuff. Yeah, and his family's all in it too, and they do really cool Halloween costumes every year. I think last year oh, they were all cool. different Jokers. Oh, but it was some awesome. really good stuff. The one where like Joker's missing his face and it's yeah. stapled back on. His daughter went with that. Nice. He's got some great stuff. I, I know because he's like retired now, but he. He's like yeah. the preeminent, you know, like makeup effects guy. And so his like, you know, I'm just kind of shitting this out is like fucking brilliant <laughs> stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm saying, you know, that kind of flippant, you know, he doesn't yeah. shit anything out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. like it's all fantastic. But when you have that talent, you know, you can just like you're whittling. Is right. Like, like, I thing. love that. Like he clearly still has the creative energy he needs oh, yeah. to put out, though. Yeah. Like even though he's retired, he's still doing it. Oh, I love yeah. that. He'll just he'll do just makeup effects just for Instagram just to That's show it so all cool. and stuff That's like so that. Cool. He's yeah, always working. And you know the other thing too that I like about him, he has embraced um, digital technology on his own. Like you know he was Photoshop guy and mm-hmm. After Effects guy, and like he learned three D modeling and he can build shit in three D. Um, you know, it's just about yeah. more the application of it. How do you yeah. actually? So it's like no matter what you're doing, like he's still the guy. Yeah, he's still the guy. I and uh, I read an interview with him where he said that, uh, you know, he, basically his phone stopped ringing, uh, you know, because everybody's moved on to different you know types of effects work and all this other stuff. But mm-hmm. he's like, you know, as long as there's money, even if it's a lower budget movie, he said, you know, it's like people think they can't call me. You know, wow. <laughs> what a what a position to be in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah career purgatory like yeah oh well let's give him a, let's make a movie let's That's right. a movie and give him a yeah. call yeah, and get some well, funding for Rick Baker agent. like what yeah. the hell? what's his manager doing right. he's got one I don't know we shouldn't do we should call him up I don't Rick, know. Rick. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway uh, to your point they were they promoted this movie by showing the design of the like I think it was like you know he had made up Benicio Del Toro as the wolf man and yep. I remember two like images that were released like well in advance I think, oh, yeah. of shooting yep. Where they're like, here's the wolf man, yeah, and they're like, posed. And mm-hmm. yeah, like, Ooh, we're just gonna show all of it. Like, is that a good move? No, I don't think so. Personally, for the advertising of this it's movie never, or for I the mean, movie it's itself, a, it's a remake, though. 
Like we, it doesn't look I mean, that different ca- from the original, right, but, you know. And it's also called the Wolfman. Yeah. Like, there's gonna be a Wolfman in it, so yeah. 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 So mean, if that's your star, maybe you're like you're gonna show off your Wolfman. Yeah, I'm the like, right. makeup plus, effect is right. Plus it being or them wanting to go so close to the kind of the original look from the Wolfman, they're just like, look. Yeah. They're trying to get the people, the like bona fide old school horror nerds who love that movie, just like, look, it looks like it. Come watch our movie. I know when you the, uh, like you're saying that the mm-hmm. that it is like this uh, like he was reverential I think to the mm-hmm. original Jack Pierce mm-hmm. makeup effect. They were adamant. Yeah. yeah, this is just like a modern version it of is. that original. And yeah. like I know people probably you know if you're unfamiliar with that you're sitting there going like I don't see it. But no, I mean if you look at like the appliances, no, yeah. the sculpting, it's and all like the same. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just mm-hmm. a hairier. You know, it right. walks on stilts and all that, mm-hmm. but a little I mean, wilder. Yeah. Uh, apparently, Benicio del Toro's big Wolfman fan collects memorabilia and everything. I so love he was that. That's so great. Really like championing this movie and to you know, to he get looks off. a lot like Lon Chaney Jr. Too. They have the same I, like face shape. I think and his nose shape. look is really good for this yeah. character. Mm-hmm. That's all I'll say. <laughs> so you're having you have a problem with his performance? It feels is a little that- sleepy. Everyone feels a little sleepy in this yeah, movie. Everyone, I mean, the movie itself yeah. seems very sleepy to me. I mean, there are amped up versions it is of it a good when it turns into an, when it, it turns sure into is. an action movie. <laughs> but other than that, yeah, right, yeah, Holly, how you doing? <laughs> but yeah, it does feel like a little sleepy. Well, they so we watched the director's cut, mm. um, and again, you know what that is is you know it's a longer version of the movie than what that was released is. theatrically. <laughs> yep. Um, the theatrical version. Uh, changes a lot of the first act. There, there's at least two major scenes um, in this version. So, I mean, it's a remake of The Wolfman, but it's basically taking the character, uh, uh, the characters, and then recasting them, and then it adds another character, which is mm-hmm. a detective, Frederick Aberline, who or Aberline, yes. who was the investigator, real life investigator of the Jack the Ripper murders. Mm-hmm. And so they're like, well, if somebody's tearing people apart in uh, Blackmore, we should have the guy who investigated the Ripper murders come over mm-hmm. and, and the famous unsolved case. Right? He's, he's a now, terrible this detective. Idea, I like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I like that idea a lot. Yeah, um, but I also like this. This is Hounds of Baskerville, right? Like it's very Baskerville-y. That there's a house on the moors, and there's a well. That one's a ghost dog, and is it a ghost dog? Oh, I don't know. You have to actually right watch it. the. Or yeah, um, I mean, there is a there is a Lawrence Talbot and a Sir John, and they do in the first one, and they do have a um, you know, like the 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 younger guy is estranged and returning to the family home, but his dad is very like loving and supportive. Mm-hmm. Where in this one. They've changed the dynamic, where, yes. you know, so there's going to be an antagonistic relationship. Classic here. rich family dynamic. Yeah. The disappointment son that has to be burdened with the inheritance but can't live up to his dad's standards. Yeah. And they keep using the analogy of the biblical, the prodigal son mm-hmm. comes yeah. up a lot. Yeah. Did um did the theatrical cut start the same way with the like werewolf murders right off the bat? Yep, there is a okay. werewolf murder off the bat, but then. Gwen sends uh, Lawrence a letter, and yeah. it's interesting that in the movie they keep referring to her sending no him a letter. letter. But in the in the director's cut, she goes. He's a yeah. he's a Shakespearean actor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. in this one, apparently he's famous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and kind of a lout, right? Mm-hmm. And she goes and like your brother, he's he's missing. Uh, you know, come and help. And he's like, I don't have time for it. <laughs> and you're like, what a dick. And then yeah. he's like, okay, I changed my mind. So he gets on a train. This is also new. And Max von Sydow is there. Yeah. yeah. And I see why they cut this scene out. Because it doesn't matter. It doesn't, and, it, yeah. and it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make no. sense at all. Because when you watch it, the implication that I had, especially this time, like, okay, he, you know, he falls asleep and he drops his uh, photo of his mother. Yeah. And then he wakes up and Max von Sydow is there. And Max von Sydow has a cane that he got from Javudan, France, which mm-hmm. is... A little thing for anybody who knows the uh, the Brotherhood of the Wolf or the, mm-hmm. the Beast of oh. Jevedon. Yeah. Um, and he, so he gives him the famous, you know, Wolfman Kane. But then after Denise and Benicio del Toro falls asleep, when he wakes back up, the the uh, the photo is still on the floor where he dropped it. Mm-hmm. And then we're supposed to be this like, whole thing a dream. Did fate leave him this cane? And then what is the connection? 
I know the cane is used in the end sequence, yeah. but I'm not entirely sure. I and like yeah, it, it probably made, could have been left. It up. would have made more sense if Max von Zito's character was like a Van Helsing kind of character. If he was the detective, you know, if he was in more than just the scene. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. just a cameo. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't really make sense. Um, and then I think it basically then uh, the, the the theatrical movie. There is a werewolf attack at a gypsy camp, but. This might be my favorite scene in the whole movie. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> it's Dude's just running awesome. into frame, missing arms and, and everything. I want, I want more gypsy lore. Yeah, that I stuff was cool. Lore. Yeah, the, more They get taken stuff. out too early in this movie. For sure, yeah. yeah. I want creepy gypsies. And they don't really, I guess maybe that's the thing, you know, you think like um, the Wolfman, the original, and, you know, uh, 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 well, it seems like gypsy curses have kind of gone around with the Wolfman lore mm-hmm. forever, but... Well, maybe the first one doesn't really have. It's like the gypsies know everything about werewolves. Yeah, right. And doesn't he go to like an antique store, and that's where he gets the staff, and he talks to her about it, and she's like, "Oh, there's a curse on that." Am I? No. Well, it, it's Gwen's antique okay. store. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, but he gets cursed because he goes to the the fair with her, right? That's or the gypsy right. carnival yep. mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. And then he's attacked by the Bella mm-hmm. Lugosi werewolf. Mm-hmm. He gets bit and then mm-hmm. he starts seeing the, mm-hmm. the five pointed star in his hand. Right. And all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Forgot about that. Um, in this one, he's investigating like who killed his brother. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that of course leads him to the gypsy carnival. And this is like a big action scene. Like, you know, yeah. Within awesome. the first half hour or whatever of the cool. movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this is to, I think, you know, uh, the, the theatrical cut changes it so you get to the first actual werewolf transformation earlier. This one, it's about an hour mm-hmm. before you actually get Benicio del Toro turning into a, a wolf man. Mm-hmm. But okay, so at this uh, big gypsy encampment, they have the world's worst CGI bear because apparently Bart the bear <laughs> Bart wasn't, wasn't available yeah. that day. What, what, yeah. what is this? Like they definitely had Bart budget. Like being a hundred and fifty right, yeah. million, they could. It wasn't a matter of like they couldn't afford him. Yeah, was he booked for like an Oscar bait movie that year or something? Like, I think a lot of what this is is that. Joe Johnson lo- likes to work in digital, and the fact that they he came in so late to the process, he left a lot of this stuff to be done later on with digital, so they could mm-hmm. get the shooting and production and all that stuff. That makes sense. See, we'll we'll yeah, fix it. That, we'll fix it in post. That would the movie. actually <laughs> back up something that Rick Baker said because, and this is like, I think this is the most controversial thing about this entire movie. You know, it's now the right? CG. It's well. So Rick Baker's hired mm-hmm. to do the makeup and the transformation. One of the He's greatest the guy practical effects makers ever. He invented it, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and while well, him and, and uh, uh, Rob Smith. Bottin, but ro- mm-hmm. while well, the transfer, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, and, but Rob Bottin was a, was a protege of, of Rick Baker, right? right? Doing the howling at the same time. Yes. So Rick Baker is paid and his shop comes up with, you know, because he wants to show off. This is. 2010 right mm-hmm. this is what american werewolf would be like if we did it today with this shit right. so they build this stuff right and on the day of the big transformation in the insane asylum he shows up and he's not on the call sheet this is the way he tells it oh, and it was basically like we're not going to use you uh we're we've decided we're just going to do it uh digitally we're going to do it in post because i guess you know Maybe I think it probably Sean what you're saying. It's they had a schedule, yeah, and so the the transformation effects got sacrificed because we got to move to do that, and we'll just we'll do it later. We have yeah. all the time in the world after the fact. Yep, you know, we, we all just dates. got like collective douche chills just thinking yep. about yeah. the, the cringe of telling like Rick Baker that. Like, oh my god, oh he's like, still heartbroken oh about like, it. Like, I can't even listen shot, to it you know? without getting sweaty. Be. Like, oh my god, like, you got some fucking nerve, man. <laughs> right. right? They probably sent I, a stage like uh, a PA, uh, sir. Yeah, sir. <laughs> but if I had to be well, on, we that won't set, need you today. I if I had to be on that set and over here that i might have died like i just i would have imploded on myself with cringe i can't even imagine are you the wolf guy like, <laughs> <laughs> sorry it's a closed set sir we can't yeah. let you in. sorry 
I'm gonna need you. Moose outside should have told you. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna need you to do that voice the rest of the podcast. <laughs> Random Universal PA. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. So having said that, I know a great cinematic injustice has been done. How's the the transformation scene in your werewolf? Movie? I really like it. I like it. It looks painful <laughs> as fuck. Yeah. Sean is uh, wait. Sean. Sean. Uh, so I'm just disappointed, and like well, every day, you're like, what, what do you want out of you're, this? But you're, are you no, disappointed this is, because you know it's, that it's, information? It's be- it's, That's not really the movie. Like the movie, most people yeah. will go and see just the movie and just accept the movie for yeah. what is. But we on know screen. this yes. behind yeah, the scenes right. stuff. Uh, the, but even the behind the scenes stuff is like it doesn't. Th- this part where they're in kind of the uh, the auditorium, um, and the transformation is the best looking part of this movie as far as the CG goes. But it still, it still what? just looks bad, and I and I'm also disappointed that this is because of the the transformation. The first one we get earlier when he's like climbing up the steps and everything. Also, like that one looks bad. Like I can't. I just it looks bad. I what's can't your, get what's past your pref- it. Give I, us an example of your preferred transformation. Is there what movie do you like the transformation? American Werewolf. But the only difference I like, wait, is no, no, practical the howling, versus the howling CGI. I like too. That's a good one. That's I'm sorry. That's enough for me. Right, but like, but like, but, but can, we live in a world where this is like, like we we've never seen the Hulk do like a practical effect transformation. Well, and why are we okay with that? But werewolves are held to a different standard. We don't have a history of Hulks. We do though. Nah, not yeah. we not do. Kind of like, we Going do, back to the like television a- show. <laughs> yes, we do. Yeah, a few now. Yeah, 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 we do. All right, fine. I'm just, I'm just saying. Like, it's weird that werewolf movies were like, "Don't you dare progress any further with technology. You stay in the olden days." I'm but all okay other with them genres of movies further, were. If it looked anything like what I've seen before with right, but this is now. This is twelve years looking yeah. back on this 2010 this is, technology. This is yeah. Well, I remember. Ah. Yeah, because some of that, I wonder if it is the the you know twelve years ago tech. Well, but sure. I remember an American Werewolf in Paris, oh, which God. was I think Ooh. the first. It's been on my list for a while, right? Because <laughs> I watched like, that trailer and it makes no, me feel we've, ill. We've yeah. talked about it. that's been on my list and your list for a while. Yeah. But I. Like I can't bring myself to bring it because it's with so it. bad. Like I want to talk about it, but I don't want to watch it again. Me too. <laughs> like, Same. Same. Yeah, because it had. But, but I remember, like I remember the experience of seeing that was like, oh, it's a werewolf movie post the industry's conversion to yeah. doing everything CG. Right, right. So you're like, I guess there was kind of an excitement to see. All right. So what's this going to look like? And then you see it and you're like, oh my God, you know, it was just so terrible because I mean, you know, we're, 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 we do better CG than that now, I suppose. Right. I mean, even looking at the bear in this. If they would have done it today with the Jungle Book, you know. Right, right. Uh, well, what's the equivalent? John John Favreau's Wolfman. What did you think about the bear and prey? I thought that one looked pretty good. That looked it's, pretty good. It yeah. looks pretty better. good. It's yeah. better. Pretty good, it's yeah. still not there. I think but no. in think, the one in like the Revenant or whatever. Yeah. I mean, like uh, they yeah. look a lot. That was good. Better. They look a lot, but well, uh, yeah. The There's problem, weight and everything that doesn't also work for mm-hmm. me. The problem with this bear versus the Revenant or prey is this bear is just sitting there and not doing anything. Yeah. The yellow bears are like when you have action shots, you can shake yeah. things up and cut we around. Got, and, we got a good look yeah. at this bear. <laughs> this bear was just yeah, that this bear, bear was, just sat there that bear and was did nothing. In that yeah. Shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, as we're, I mean, in the matter of speaking, though, like yeah, I don't have a problem with the bear, but we're talking about the transformation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, but I but I like how they attempted to frame this bear, and the gypsies yeah. were like, no. He just dances. Yeah. I love that line. No, they really he did. just yeah. dances. The Russians love their bear. I actually think they the bear bat for that had bear. a yeah. bigger role in the in the Andrew Kevin Walker version. Yeah. I think there was, and was so this may be like the oh shit, we got to um, save money. He's defending and, his people. Oh yeah, my god, they're, they're they're awesome. Awesome. I, I can't remember to be honest with you. But, but I, I love that like that's how, what kicks off this whole event is that, yeah. that that like villagers are coming like with with <laughs> come the and torches yeah. to kill this bear because they yeah. think it's killing everybody and, and the gypsies like, defend like, back no fuck off. he just dances mm, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. the the gravitas with which that line was said was so just, funny to just me. dancing yeah. this, this all yeah and maybe guess, a little vodka every now and then but he's just dancing yeah. and I guess be, you know we only get like a kind of a tease of the brutality of the werewolf in the opening scene mm-hmm. and this is the uh, like mm-hmm. I mean, I mean it is like an action scene. I guess yeah. that's yeah. what you know. You know, limbs are flying, blood is spraying everywhere. Yeah, yeah. werewolves are 
fastly Claws circling. Are going through yeah. throats. They're, it, yeah. they're, like he's he's like as yeah. he flies past screen and takes dudes out. Yeah, and you're like, oh my god, this thing's ferocious as hell. The guy who got the claw in the throat, right? Yeah, it deserves a special mention because that was David Schofield who played the the police constable in this. He was the dart player in American Werewolf. Oh, in nice. London. That's yeah, awesome. <laughs> well, like they got him back, and Rick Baker's in that scene too. Yeah. Nice. It was like a gypsy. Cool. That's great. Um, but yeah, I mean, the werewolves tearing through camp, and then uh, uh, Larry goes out to uh, try and uh, save a kid who wanders off into Stonehenge. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. A henge. Yeah, and uh, a henge, and mm-hmm. uh, is bitten by a werewolf. Mm-hmm. Indeed. So now we know there's two werewolves, mm-hmm. right? Michaela. Yep, yep. <laughs> we know. And I'm already like, <laughs> I, I'm already like, yep, this is what I didn't like about this movie the first time I saw it. So how did it play this time? Because I guess, you know, you're expecting it. But I mean, it is it's kind so of obvious woven like, into the plot. It's just so obvious. Like it. I mean, we know that he's going to turn into a werewolf because we know this is a remake of a movie we've seen before. Yep. And, but yet werewolf attacks are happening before he even shows up. Okay. So there's two werewolves in this movie. Like yeah. it's, well, that's the thing. Like, <laughs> is it supposed to be like a twist or a big reveal? I think it thinks if it they're, is if they're playing it that way. Then it doesn't, I don't think they're playing it that if way. If it's just supposed to be like, yeah, we know that you see what's happening. Then I'm okay with it. Yeah. Cause yeah, it's hard to tell it with the that, ending. Yeah. Well, yeah. Cause I mean, you know, Sir John basically, is communicating and he's just an off guy the whole right, way through yeah. and seems to be communicating this to us uh throughout the yeah, entire like movie the, yeah. until he finally I, that's one of I don't want re- you to don't want you to go outside don't want to lose you too it's, I, I, it's I, a sitcom setup it'd be a real shame if you uh went outside and went for a late night fog walk tonight you know yeah. like that but i think that's definitely one, shouldn't do I that you got some nice reason. limbs there it'd be a shame if you lost them yeah. <laughs> yeah. but i think that's one of the reasons the movie's so sleepy is because the audience knows but the character doesn't yeah and that makes it a sleepy story yeah. and so we're waiting right. for it to happen Right. Because we're we know we- it's going to exactly. happen. Mm-hmm. And it fills that with like uh, drama between, I guess, like Lawrence, you know, returning home to the villagers and all the villagers are kind of a suspicious lot making fun of his mom and they don't know yeah. he's there. Every, and- every, every I, I do love the bar, the small little bar in every one of these horror movies. Cause it's oh, yeah. a bunch of uh, yokels just drinking They're and being assholes. like, I yeah. heard a story about the moors. Every dude in the village at the tavern. Yep. Mm-hmm. This is where this is where people got their news back then. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. The, but I just love it's that classic like you come back to your hometown and everyone's still an asshole you know like I love that that's his his journey that he's on right now it's, it's like a trope that I'll never get tired of. yep yep <laughs> it's like he came home for Thanksgiving he's going yeah. out to the bar the night before Thanksgiving yep. he's like wow didn't miss this shit at all it'll always work yep and they have to set up like a romance I guess because even though this is technically your brother's wife but now he's dead and nah. er, no they were they were oh, that's right the the uh, I thought I said wife I'm I sure said, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong because she's living in the house and this is yeah, 1897 or something like that. But this so house is the size of a fucking high school. Like this house Many is rooms. gigantic and full in the, of leaves. In, in, yeah. in full of leaves. Yeah. In the peak of its time, who was in this house? <laughs> How many people there must and have what been were they the doing? Talbot family. Yeah, the, the entire and family they tree died, in this house. Yeah. got killed off over the years. And then, How rich people live, Sean. They have big houses that they live in. There's like four people there. Yeah, and mausoleums yeah. bigger than any house we will happened? ever live in, you guys. Oh, no, mausoleums of no, no, no. the basement. Yeah, yeah catacombs. Oh, that's right, because I guess the whole thing, and the reason why Lawrence left his house was because his mom uh, it was a gypsy, mm-hmm. married his dad, and then she killed herself. At least that's what he's And he saw been. it. So he was sent to an insane asylum for several years, so that, of course, then now puts him in suspicion of these murders, even though I'm not entirely sure how that works out, because apparently all the witnesses are dead and... Gypsies mm-hmm. won't talk to anybody. But yeah. Well, all you have to do is have been in an asylum and you were automatically a suspect. Automatically. That means yeah, you suspect. are not right in the head mm-hmm. and then you are a suspect. Right. That's what I meant back then. And his wound, of course, heals too fast and Gwen feels tender towards him and nurses him back to health. And it's like, okay, I like that scene between them where they're skipping rocks. <laughs> You know, I sexy thought, rock skipping. Yeah, yeah. I thought that mm, one was like skipping. the one that kind of because I'm like, I don't know if I'm buying that. And then they had that scene. And I'm like, OK, I see there's a little something starting because then after that, it's like mm-hmm. it's going to be Wolfman mm-hmm. uh, uh, time. So um, I was a little envious waiting for someone to nurse me through my neck wound. Yeah. Not <laughs> <happening>. <laughs> well, there's um, that. Well, you have Jay. 
Mm-hmm. I do. I have a there you I, have, go. I have a sweet boy. <laughs> well, I don't know uh, the um, the the big transformation scene. Then, well, actually, uh, Sir John doesn't explain how he contracted this. No. Yeah, he does. Not in the not in the in the transformation scene. The first one in the crypt, right where where um, he's chained up. Where he yeah. finds the bondage chair and oh, the yeah. wife altar. Yeah, he's just being all weird and cryptic. Oh uh, yeah. 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 He does explain this later, and I suppose we should say it now that we brought all this up. So how did Sir John, what's the origin I, of our lycanthropy? I do like when he backs up in that scene. His yeah. Eyes, his eyes glow. glow. A little bit, yeah. His okay. origin? Like a little touch. Yeah. Anthony Hopkins, he finds a feral uh, child child in, in a, a cave. cave on like a hunting trip. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the in chi- the Hindu Kush in yeah. Afghanistan. Yes. And yeah. the child attacks him. And bites him. Yeah. And so he becomes. What a fucking origin story. Holy shit. Right? Yeah. That's the spookiest part of this movie. Yeah. You imagine finding a feral kid in a hole and it bites you, yeah. and then you get to contract like a life changing, <laughs> like inherited disease. Yeah, <laughs> that, that fucking but sucks. But that's the thing. Now, you're you're now looking I'm at this guy. Are you turning on feral now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't like the idea of like a feral child being in a hole and me not knowing about it. Is it because it's a child? <laughs> it's, it's, I, now, now yeah, this is going to lead to like a path. I, yeah. I just, that's my, I might just be my like, favorite thing you've ever said. I don't like the idea of a feral child in a hole and yeah. not know about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you know about it, you're fine? I know about if it, then I can word, avoid it. Yeah. If there's a sign posted outside, yeah. you're good. Feral yeah. child, feral yeah. child. Yeah. Yeah. Please yeah. avoid hole. You know, you hear of feral children in holes. You know how you see those street signs that are like, deaf child lives here? I know. That. <laughs> just, uh, you just see a head and an arm it's, reaching out. It's feral child lives in this hole. <laughs> That's the sign. Like feral child. An arrow pointing down. Yeah, yeah, into yeah the please hole. drive around. Yeah, like a Looney Tune style sign. Feral you know? child Like ahead. a hand painted like Wile E. Coyote sign. Yeah, that's what I'm imagining. He's a spooky little kid. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah, Actually, is. wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. I think this might be. Okay, I'm a little foggy. Mm. But this may be the origin story of Werewolf of London. <laughs> Isn't Maybe. the guy in Werewolf mm-hmm. of London who ends up like infecting the doctor? I think he says like yeah. he it was a feral child in the cave. Or, I don't know if it was a feral child, but he, somehow he got it from no, like it's similar. Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. There's some, yeah. Thinking about the existence of feral people freaks me out. <laughs> don't like it. This is like, you need odd, to see considering, the woman. Yeah. considering your destiny. Just, like right? yeah, but I don't. But I'm going feral to be away from people. Okay, mm-hmm. not to be around more people. Can you turn feral? <laughs> well, I'm just saying. Okay. You see Nell? You can, yeah. Oh, you just, oh, yeah, if you're yeah, just yeah, alone long right. enough. Yeah. Wow, How yeah, come Mogwai can... didn't go uh, yeah. Mowgli? How come Mowgli didn't go uh, Jungle Book? Yeah. 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 He go feral? No? No, he he was feral. He was feral. Yeah. Was feral before the the baboons? <laughs> yeah. Or the bear? Do you think the, the animals civilized him? <laughs> yeah, the it's baboons. It's been a really... minute since I saw the Jungle Book. The Which cartoon. one? Like cartoon. Okay. Like, yeah. no, I don't know. I just I was listening. It's definitely not feral in the cartoon. Yeah. I'll say that. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay. So the Wolfman. <laughs> the Wolfman. <laughs> yeah. Back to the Wolfman. I like that. We've uh, wandered too far into the moors. <laughs> Anthony Hopkins has this extra scene uh, that I think is like a. It's one of those like extraneous character building things, but I mm. liked it. The whole like thing that you know, I was a prize fighter like mm. back in the day before you were born, and I knocked out his manservant Singh. Yeah. Right when he was trying to chain me up, because so that's what's been going on. Like he has been trying to be responsible. Mm-hmm. About his werewolfism, yes. and gets himself like locked in the family crypt. So he wolfs yeah. out in a chair that somehow was withstood. And wolfs out in a this, chair. This uh, yeah. feral thing. Um, a picture and he's of a his keeper. wife. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he this thing locks him in. Yeah, but he knocked him out because he was drunk because he was upset that uh, son Ben was going to leave with yes. uh, Gwen. Gwen. Yeah. They just need to bring another Gwen. woman to this town. That would solve all their problems. I think so it's because Gwen wants... kind of looks like his well, yeah, they dead wife. That, yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. there should have been more to to that, I think. I don't think that comes across very strong. That he was in love with that Gwen. He was in love with Gwen. I, know, I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. They need to, it that needs to be, more. Like, yeah, it needs like to be they, a little stronger. I like that it's subtle, it's implied, but they need they do need something extra. He's there. very soft spoken. Yeah. And again, the only the only thing I can explain why they would make that choice is that, you know, he's repressed it. You know, yeah. she doesn't even know about it. And he's much older than her, but yeah. he's in love with his son's wife yeah. and wants her around. And when the son's like, well, okay, I got married and we're going to go off and live somewhere else. He mm-hmm. flips out, turns into a werewolf and kills his son. Like you do. 
Yeah, yeah. but then he's like, you know, and then I woke up and your brother's body was, uh, you know, in a ditch. Up. Hold on. Does that scene then imply that, like, the werewolfism is controllable? No. An impulse? So no, he waited until the next full moon and then. He said he was drunk and he got violent. And then Singh tried to lock him up and he knocked Singh out cold on mm. accident and mm-hmm. because he was drunk. Oh, okay. And that's gotcha. why when he turned into a werewolf, he was able to. Oh, okay. And then he yeah. woke up and his son was dead. Gotcha. And I think at that point, that's like when he's like, okay, fine. Fuck it. This is. Yeah, you know, I will free right. this beast. And then he becomes basically the villain, you know, that we he is when we first see him in the movie. It's mm. like, he's just kind of gone like, fuck it. Okay. It's very you know, unfeeling. I should have been killed years ago. Then maybe I wouldn't have killed my wife. So I should have just let this fucking thing go out mm-hmm. and, yeah. and come what may. It's been done with it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Larry does turn into a werewolf. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Larry, yeah, Larry, 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 Lawrence, Larry. Lawrence turns sure, into yeah. a, turns into a werewolf. Kills a bunch of people in, in brutal, gory uh, oh, attacks. Yeah. Um, Arms everywhere. It's blood awesome. spraying. And Jumping into in cars. <laughs> in a tree. Not like yeah. in the branches of no, a tree. No. But in a, like in the of hole of a tree. Like a yes. hollowed out tree. Yeah, yeah that's where dad Didn't finds them the next morning. Did he throw an arm at somebody? Yeah. He did. Yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah, he did throw yeah. an arm. There's a lot of CG splattered blood going all yeah. over the place. Some practical it's blood. Fun, yeah. yeah, I know. See, I like these parts. Yeah, when the werewolf just, or the wolf man, sorry, is just tear assing his way through everything. Yeah. Um, but he wakes up, and of course, the everybody believes he's a werewolf anyway, because you know, yeah. like who gets bit and uh, and doesn't uh, have a wound? They heal too fast. Yeah. Aberlin lines in town. He's like, I suspected you anyway. Because yeah. even before his first transformation, the like townspeople come with their pitchforks and they're trying to like lock him up mm. before it, before he can transform. Because they know. Yeah, you know? they know. They're like, uh, they know what's up. They've yep. been around the gypsy uh, gypsies before, the uh, werewolves, and. So he is taken back to the asylum. Uh-huh. I got to tell you, this movie, what I when it was really working for me when I saw it in the theater, because like, I mean, first of all, I guess, you know, you're like, well, in most werewolf movies, they generally, most werewolf movies up to a certain point in cinema history anyway, was the kind of um, the man versus himself, right? Yep. The dark yep. side mm-hmm. of himself, Dr. Yep. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. What thing. you can't control and mm-hmm. all that stuff. Yeah. And then they're like, okay, after wolf or whatever, they're like, two werewolves. And you're like, yep. okay, but then you've externalized the... Because it has to be like problem. a battle of the alphas, apparently. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's what you got to get yeah. into, because we need action. We mm. need an external threat for them to deal with, so they're dealing with... We've complicated it. Mm-hmm. Now we have the Great. original man versus And if you're Bad Moon, you himself. say, what about Wolf versus Dog? <laughs> what, about we're- <laughs> what if we do that? <laughs> Still mad I miss this movie. I know. I should have told it through the dog's point of view. Anyway, like yep. the book... Hmm. Um, but when they actually, so they, they, you know, they have them in this asylum and they're going to like, you know, do, uh, cause basically Sigmund Freud, I guess, or some guy who looks like is, uh, presenting this thing in a, uh, in a, in a, a theater yeah, of, of medical students. Yes. And he turns into a werewolf he's right in front of talk. him. Yeah. And then runs out onto the streets of London and there's huge set pieces in this movie where this werewolf is, you know, cause you're like, I mean, I'm like, well, they're like trying to top the Piccadilly Circus mm-hmm. scene in American Werewolf in London or right. something. Yeah. yeah. He's tearing through buses. There's cars flipping rooftops over. Rooftops and sh- the rooftop yeah. running is pretty dope. I love yeah. that shit. And I think that's a scene that oh, most people remember from this movie. Yeah. The wolf top, it's the rooftop scene. But yeah. there's no coming back from this. I guess no. that's usually, you know. See, those- all I see is League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. <laughs> When I see stuff like Ugh. this, dare you? Because yeah. there was a, uh, there was what? Uh, How a, uh, dare you? Hyde running across the rooftop. Yeah. looked mm-hmm. exactly the same. Ignore. Van Helsing. Oh, we got to bring that to the free shows. Okay, anyway, yeah. like Hugh Jackman, <laughs> Van Helsing. <laughs> yeah, Doctor yeah. uh, Mister Hyde runs across the rooftops. Yeah. The Notre Dame Everyone Cathedral we'll we'll before it, it we'll broke it. or burned down. Let's can we give it a little bit after the Wolf Man? Can we, can we <laughs> pause? Well, this is part of the season. I know this yeah, is like very Halloween true. runoff. Yeah. For I, our I folks think at home. every scene of everybody riding a horse dramatically looks amazing. Mm-hmm. Like every scene where someone's galloping on a horse through like the foggy moors and stuff, yeah. it looks fucking incredible. Oh yeah, yeah anytime you get does. that kind of like that silhouette of the Wolf Man trekking through the yeah. woods and everything, it's cool looking. Mm-hmm. I. Love that. And I got to tell mm-hmm. you, like, this was another way that this movie kind of defied my expectation, I guess, because I was like, you know, they're like, we're doing the Wolfman. And in your mind, you're kind of like, 
okay, Benicio Del Toro's in it, and, you know, Anthony Hopkins, and you're trying to put together, like, what's this movie going to look like? But when I first saw the trailer, I'm like, oh, my God, this is, like, fantastic. You can, you know, how do you do night instead of just doing, like, blue moonlight, right? Mm -hmm. They just, like, I don't know how many, 100, 100 yards in the yeah. background, they just cover because this is what you can do when you have millions of dollars. Right. They just fog the shit out of it and yep. backlight it. Yep. So everything is in shadow in the foreground mm -hmm. and the light is in the background, it but it doesn't great. look like it's really yeah. lit up. So you get mm -hmm. dark, it's, you know, it's like it's cutout gorgeous. characters running yeah. through these woods. But even yep. like in non-consequential scenes, like in the third act, when Emily Blunt rides her horse up to the house, she stops like framed perfectly in the doorway and there's like one beam of light yeah. coming down on yeah. her and it like lights up her horse and her cloak. And yeah. like that is a totally throwaway transitional scene that looks like a fucking painting. It's I know like, there's oh, a lot yeah. of the light on the, yeah, in this movie really i really beautiful. and the production design and all that i mean i guess what it's i suppose you know you're like yeah it's really creative and all that but it's like well you know it's 150 million dollars you should be able to afford that right uh, very, right. very <laughs> true yeah. um but i guess you know if if a werewolf tears his tears ass through london like there's no going like you know well this was an isolated event that just happened in this little corner of town mm -hmm. or out in the boonies this is a major event everybody knows like oh shit there's the real thing it's yeah. a werewolf. It's running around. And uh, Aberlene is like, we got to kill him on sight. You know, it's like, you see him, don't talk to him, just kill him. And so then we have to pursue Lawrence back to the house where he has to have the final confrontation with his dad. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is Anthony Hopkins in Werewolf. Rick Baker, yep. Merritt Werewolf. I love, it. Yeah, I love that he's a barrel-chested werewolf, too. He really too. is, too. Yeah, and I it's love like it. they only built out his chest and his he's arms like, and his head and his legs stayed yeah. the same. Yeah. He's like full daddy werewolf. <laughs> yeah. He really is. But I like that... Okay, I, I love this scene, but it feels very WWE. Oh, yeah, they're wrestling. Yes, there's it there's does. Flip. Uh, no, no, you know what it feels like? If Go back and watch, and then uh, I don't expect anybody to do it, but uh, the Power Rangers movie. Yeah. With Ivan Ooze. The fight <laughs> scenes in that feel like this. Yeah. Where they're they're kicking a guy and he goes up a little bit and he comes back down and you kick him again and he goes up a little bit back down like it's it's cartoon bounciness to yeah. it See, which I, I don't yeah I was more thinking about like how they would throw someone and they would fly you know fifty feet and then yeah, that's like, a, yeah I was the wire like, oh. wire yeah. throws There's and stuff wire like that. work but I in like this seeing movie. Wi how often do you see wire work in a movie though I like I'm nostalgic for it because I feel yeah. like I so rarely see it in a I movie mean, nowadays I like that they're doing that well they are accentuating some of it with CG so yeah. it's yeah. not like that isn't in there but I mean I like when they do it. But I mean, it it does add this kind of artificiality. To, at so at some point, I'm pretty sure I saw the Wolfman leap onto the side and cling onto the side of a wall. Yeah, oh, yep. he did. He, did. Yeah. he for sure did. <laughs> he did. And I know yeah. he's got talons and all that stuff. And like, maybe you could convince me that he did it. But it was like. Oh, we're doing that. Where they're just kind of they can defy gravity and yeah. bounce around all over the place. Um, I still like the the scene though. I yeah, mean, no, I mean, <laughs> I mean, like honestly, that I feel like that's all movies now. Like those Fast and the Furious movies are like that too, and those are normal yeah. people. They're not superheroes yeah. or monsters yeah. or anything, and they, those are kind of they survive all sorts of weird shit like that. Yeah. A bear can climb a tree, so can a wolf man. Yeah. He can climb a wall. Why not? Yeah, all they need real I mean, I believe it. If they give me yeah, a little thing where you just see one insert shot where he goes and yeah. you get the sound effect yeah. of a crunch yeah. into the wall. See, Christopher and Nolan would do that. Yeah. 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 That's all you <laughs> <gotta> <laughs> do. Where's he? Give me Christopher <laughs> Nolan's like any honestly give him any universal monster movie yeah. and let him do it. Right? I want to see I'm so down. He's gotta explain oh, how it all happened. You, well, I was gonna say you want an unsimplified monster movie yeah. you're gonna get christopher nolan's I'm wolf man yeah i can handle so it complex <laughs> well at the end of the movie yes he does deal with his familial uh, uh conflict <laughs> knocks his cgi head off yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah cgi head comes off but then we're not done because you still have to deal with man versus himself and that's mm. uh you know gwen shows up is love enough, Colin? I is it enough? This is this is where the movie is. I was like, stop, stop, stop. That movie is over. It's over. It's over. It's over. <laughs> Let's not keep going. Like that shot of you panning into the moon. That the, mo the, the movie's end. done. The movie's yeah. done. And then no, no, we got to get a voiceover from Gwen yeah. to say wow. what. It overstayed its welcome a little bit. Yes, there, I mean, we're talking about like thirty seconds of runtime, right? Yeah. But, but and yeah, but still, it's too like much. we get now, it. Okay. Oh. <laughs> there is this cane in this movie. There's a cane that's got a sword in this movie, mm -hmm. which I'm assuming is made of silver. 
Pardon me. Yeah, it why, looked like it. Why is this not? He takes it like out the to ultimate stab weapon? his dad, and I'm not sure what happened there. I was actually Aber- paying Aberline attention. Everyone gets it at some point. Like he picks it up when he leaves the house. Yeah, but like, why wasn't used. that what she killed him with? Right, because why this is, is that... set up in the mystical Max von Sydow right. scene at the beginning. Yeah, and, and I it's wonder a because she more... had it there. Was it quote unquote romantic? Yeah. Like if she's got to like stab him with the silver sword and then he dies, like yeah. rather than just shoot him, like because he doesn't recognize her when he comes upon her by the waterfall, right? He's a you know like she's like recognize me, and yeah. you're like, For a minute, like American Werewolf right, in like, London, <laughs> maybe he's like he goes gonna... for that final lunge like he does in this, but he gets up. <gasps> Yeah, yeah, but she yeah. shoots him. It would have been way more poetic. Po- I want some, po- yeah. some poetry in this movie, goddammit. It, and it I doesn't think have it. The other thing that I would suggest that, I mean, how you could fix it, and I think, well, not maybe fix it completely, but I think the way it was originally shot, I think after she shoots him and he transforms back into Lawrence, I think he's dead. Because if you watch the shot on her where she cradles his body, yeah. mm-hmm. I was like, he's dead. You know, yeah. and then, but then one shot he blinked, and I'm like, they chose that because yeah. that was the in the take that was where he blinked, and that said he's alive, so they can come over yep. her shoulder and give a close up of him where he gets to say, "Thank you for saving yep. me." Yeah, you know, you've been the love of my life, and it wraps up the character thing. So basically, the human version of him is able to acknowledge that he loves her and he likes. I you didn't know, need he, that. No, no, nope. I didn't need that. I, I think it's that. it's tr- more tragic. Yeah. If she kills the the but beast, but it's a tragic story. It's a yeah. tragic story. It's a curse. Yeah. This is don't end well. Yeah. Like they oh, just don't. Yeah. Like, and it was way too obvious that like it wasn't intended to be that way because he wakes up and he's like fully conscious. And then yeah. all of a sudden, right. dead. He's yeah. Like, Thank you like, so much. Thank like, you. Uh, did, dead. Just dying. Yeah. Like, yeah. It and it's like the, even wow. the color timing on that scene doesn't yeah. seem. It's it like that was a reshoot wow. that took yeah. place like sometime yep. later. Yeah. yeah, that's why yeah. you end on that shot of the moon. Be ballsy enough to give me the tragedy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This movie Nobody is wants considered a. I, I've, I was reading stuff today, and they're like, well, it was a flop at the box office. And I'm like, well, how much did it make? It made $146 million. Uh oh, that's not good. Well, if the movie costs $150 million, mm-hmm. that's bad. Yeah. It made $146 million. That's a lot of money yeah. for a Wolfman movie. Yeah. Uh, but it didn't beat its budget because right, yeah. of all the reshoots and whatever they had to do with it. So it's so considered. Hugo Weaving will not be coming back for the Wolfman Part Two. Not coming back. I thought he did a really good job in this. All of his like you know ticks and all his, yep. his decisions and in, in mm-hmm. his acting. I that did scene. like. I did like his little monologue in the tavern. Yeah, that's he was explaining what, yeah. why he was a there and not out it, looking please. for him. Yeah, yeah. 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 That yeah no, was he's good, he's good. Was good. Well, there was, uh, so they, they were originally like, okay, we're going to, because we're spending this much money, we're going to make a direct-to-video sequel, because that's what uh, Universal did at that period of time, yeah. all the Death it? Race sequels and all that, so they made Werewolf, uh, sequel? was it Werewolf Among Us? What's the thing called? It's like this, well, well, event, because this movie didn't do what it was supposed to, they changed the title to Werewolf and I think they used maybe some of the, I don't know, they they shot it on a budget, but it was supposed to be um, connected and then ultimately wasn't. Ah. Hmm. And then Werewolf, what the hell is it called now? That, look up. It's called Werewolf, the <laughs> subtitle uh, from Universal. <laughs> it came out probably in 2011, 2012 and was direct to video. Um, in the 2020s. Ah. Sorry, late, late uh, like 2010s. Right hmm. Uh Marvel became a huge thing. And Universal said, well, we have the original interconnected universe, so we should do this again with the Dark Universe. Mm-hmm. Anybody remember this? The I dark, do. Uh, the dark I, universe. It, it, it fizzled so quickly. It's The Mummy is actually on the list to bring here, just because I haven't seen it, <laughs> it and I'm kind of curious. The Tom but, Cruise, The Mummy. Tom Cruise, <laughs> Russell Crowe. Who was the werewolf? In what? Well, they cast everybody. They had Javier Bardem. Remember that picture? Yeah, where yes, was there was that picture. Giant yeah. Depp was the Invisible Man. Mm-hmm. Javier Bardem was Frankenstein, yeah. I think. Which right? is great casting. Which, yeah, he'd be good Frankenstein. He had, his head is shaped like that already. Yeah, yeah. I was like, he's that's got pretty, a scowling. They don't have to add much to that. No, no he'd perfect. be creepy. Yeah. That'd be good. I don't think they had cast their wolf I don't think so I don't either. think so. Dwayne Johnson was, of course, uh, mentioned at some point. Oh, and I'm like, no. what? that's too 
you're going the wrong way with it, but they they you were need, doing you need action to go movies. like the Terminator way, where they almost cast Lance Henriksen because he was kind of a smaller, unassuming yeah. An guy. Unassuming guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of. I don't want some thing, big right? jacked up. I don't literally. We got. I don't literally want a wrestler when we got like wrestling scenes. Right. Right. In this movie. Yeah. yeah. G- give That's me some sure. average looking yeah. person. Yeah. yeah. No. Because it's got to be Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde, right? One yeah. of them is the the Beast. Yeah. And you can't go from beast to beast. Right. Can't. right. Does he get smaller when he transforms into the wolf? Man. Yeah, yeah. If he's if he's Dwayne Johnson, yeah. How can he, he get bigger? Yeah, you know that would be funny. Seriously. Well, then Universal. So they shit can the Dark Universe, but then they hit Pater anyway because they got an alternate uh, suggestion for how you could do a Universal monster with the Invisible Man. Mm-hmm. That was so great. They're like, that was a great movie. Okay, Blumhouse. Uh, since you made a fortune on this, maybe you know what you're doing. And then there were announcements that there was going to be a Dracula. You remember that one? Mm-hmm. That never materialized. Mm-hmm. And there was going to be a Wolfman with Ryan Gosling. And an mm-hmm. invisible woman. Mm-hmm. Yep. And what, Not with Elizabeth Moss, with mm-hmm. Elizabeth Banks? Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. And none of these have yet to materialize. Yeah. And it's very possible that they lost all interest in doing it. But that would bring us to our current state of wolf Wolfman. Mm-hmm movies honestly their mistake given how many horror movies we've had come out this year alone and how many legacy how much legacy sequels and reboots are popular right now they are missing out on the trend they may have found a way into dracula though with renfield the nicholas mm-hmm. yeah. cage movie yeah because yeah. mm-hmm. i think that it, it, that looks well at least interesting from right the, the sounds from what i've heard of it yeah mm-hmm. yeah and we've watched Vampire's Kiss, so I'm just ready right. for that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yes. Any echo of that Woo. to come back? Oh my God! Yeah, we're gonna we, we have to complete the circle, right? Like yeah. this is the other half of that. Mm. I think so. Oh the God. sequel was Can't wait. Uh, Werewolf Beast Among Us. Beast Among Us. Yeah, it came out in 2012. Okay, there you go. That was originally planned as a sequel to this. Mm. All right. There's no one in it. <laughs> yeah, no. I saw. It. I saw it. It was it was hard to get through. You know, what I was also thinking like we were talking CGI werewolves. Um, Underworld 2, uh, uh, Evolution, yeah, had a pretty good practical, like, werewolf. The, it wasn't the, bad. The, yeah, mm-hmm. the, the alpha werewolf yeah. that shows alpha, up in that yeah. one was it like, wasn't bad. meh, not bad. Mm-hmm. For those movies, I was like, okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. their yeah. werewolf transformations weren't all that good either. Mm-hmm. Nope. Okay, fine. I didn't mind the one in this, though, for the record. Uh, okay, so now um, we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, The Wolf Man. But first... We're going to read some of your mail. And in order to, the, to do that, we're going to need the mail. That means we're going to have to summon our mailman, Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Oh, no, there's two Igors. They must fight. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> and it's like it's like a fighting video game where like one has blue shorts and one has white right, shorts. Same one, look the same. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I play, you pick Sub-Zero to fight Sub-Zero. <laughs> yeah. So now one of them's got to be a little bit different color. Yep. Yes. Well, a slightly different shade Is that green. howling or anything or sprouting hair or doing anything? It's, uh, no. No. Just, uh, no. No. Nothing, just, out, no, just nothing out of the ordinary. Maybe they can go into beast mode. You hit a button. And you go to, okay. I don't think he has the power up for that yet. Right. Gonna fill he, the he's got bar. like a leg that turns into a wolf leg because that's <laughs> that part came from a, a person who changes into a werewolf. Yeah. So it's just the leg. It's that one wolf leg. That's it's it. Igor is stitched so together kinda, from other people. Yeah. So during those times when it's the full moon, he's lopsided. Right. He's got Imagine he's got one wolf. Yeah. Wolf Frank leg. See, I haven't seen that. We Frankenstein would have oh, sewed he's, on oh. a, a werewolf's leg. See, that'd be, or a werewolf, no, he would have a werewolf arm, so you could have a claw. <laughs> yeah. Slash well, that's be, not a bad idea. He'd be unstoppable. Idea. And he's got different, piece, different pieces or yeah. like different superpowers. How far yes. up the leg, though, is it like the haunch? Is it like Oh, uh, it's like up it's to full here, butt. up to the creases. <laughs> what part of him is the vampire? Part, the, part wolf go, ass. It burns part like that. Wolf cheek. One ass yeah, wolf cheek. One hairy wolf cheek. One wolf cheek. And like an arm that burns in sunlight or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Like like that. But, I like that. Not the fangs or anything. Just like just a random. Random. <laughs> or, yeah. just, or you just get one fang. Yeah. Or it's part of his back, so he sprouts like a wing or something. Okay. Ah, there we go. Or just the widow's peak. Yeah, yeah just, sure. the, just the widow speak. I would love that. Yeah. Well, we should probably dark eye circles. let it. the good folks at home know how they can participate in this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or by email. Saturday Night Freak Show, Yahoo.com. 
or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. About tonight's movie, The Wolfman, Action Dude writes in and says, this is an underrated movie. I wonder why it wasn't more of a hit. I didn't think the effects were too bad. Acting, talent, and the writing seemed solid. I thought it was better than Lon Chaney Jr. bouncing around in makeup that made him look like a pound puppy. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I love action, dude. <laughs> I've seen, there have been some werewolf movies where they look like puppies. Yeah, it bothers yeah. me. There's especially like, when like the nose is like painted black. They yeah, really look there like is. Puppies. There's one shot in the Howling. Yeah, it really the disappoints howling. me. Yeah. I'm just like, like, if uh, you get rid of that, it would have been great. <laughs> I don't, it, it's like it's somebody dressed up in dog makeup for Halloween. Yeah, uh, yeah we digress. Supposed to be a cute werewolf. Um, no. Mark Zidane says. This is the movie that made Rick Baker say, fuck Hollywood, I'm done. <laughs> mm -hmm. But his visual effects made this movie work. It's a shame the transformation scene was reduced to CGI and they didn't let Baker give us one more practical transformation. Right? Agreed. I know. It is it's a thing. Hard. Like, right? I mean, that is like part of the hook of the werewolf movie. You have to yeah. have a transformation. But question, if American Werewolf in London, and I get that, you know, like, some of the kids watching American Werewolf now, they're like, oh, it looks like rubber. It looks fake, right? But it was jaw-dropping when we right. first saw it, and that was the bar against whichever. So if you can't beat that, is there a point in doing it? Because a lot of werewolf movies, it seems like now, they skip over the transformation scenes. Right. Well, why couldn't they just compromise and have him do practical effects, and then they could like touch it up and add in CG where they need it to like cover things? Yeah. You yeah. know, I don't see why they couldn't have yeah, done that. Yeah, they did it for yeah. the rest of the movie. Because yeah. there's a lot of parts in this where they're, uh, when they're in werewolf form, they're yelling or growling, and they, they've they digitally redone their mouths so they go open yep. wider. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. they had time mm -hmm. in post, and that time right. while they were shooting. Yes. Time is money, yeah. I guess. I guess so. When you're shooting. Uh, Travis Legler writes in and says, how this movie crew hired Rick Baker after his timeless work in American Werewolf in London and then used CGI for the transformation is fucking mind boggling. However, his work when on screen is amazing, but the story was just okay. Oh, I forgot to, he won an Oscar for this. Yeah, he won, yeah. Yeah, he won mm -hmm. an Oscar. Yeah. That's right. This is an Oscar winning movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yep. I just like saying that. You the do. Oscar winning movie, you the do Wolfman. indeed. It's not even, is it on here? It's not on I don't think so. They're no. not like the Oscar winning Wolfman. No. Yeah. yeah. Why wouldn't you? Maybe this came out before that. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, the term surprisingly brutal kept running through my mind when I watched this for the first time. I also may have taken my now wife out to see this movie back when we were dating, and yet she stuck with me. Mm. <laughs> I have a dating story about this movie, too. We'll get to it. <laughs> uh, it's because it came out in February. That's why. It's Valentine's Day. Oh, oh. yeah. I also went on a date to see this movie. No. Yeah. Wow. This is like a like a, <laughs> a, a, a pivotal moment, people. Yeah, it was. Apparently. <laughs> I probably saw it by myself. Uh, I was going to say. I was married. I saw it by myself. <laughs> yeah. Um, last week, we watched a movie called From a Whisper to a Scream. And Teresa Ann said it's a very underrated horror anthology movie from the late 80s, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, for real. I was pleasantly surprised by that movie. We all were, yeah. Mm -hmm. You one. should go back and listen to our episode mm -hmm. if you haven't heard it by now. Uh, two weeks ago, we watched a movie called The Hole. <laughs> we, sure did. we had a lot of fun with that title and so did, did our listeners bill hayner says come for the hole stay for the dong <laughs> that's right. yes. that's that should right. be the tagline that's right there was a lot of dong talk of on dong. that movie dong talk. welcome to dong talk. <laughs> okay but it's not often we see five dongs in a movie you know so yeah we're gonna we're talk about what happens okay yeah uh, uh, grant Parrish says this is one of two the whole movies like the i dogs, own with the five dongs he says the other is a gay porn parody of the ring. I feel I'm like so, I missed the first part of that. <laughs> he says this is one of two whole the whole movies I, I own. Know. The other is a gay porn parody of the ring. I love it. I feel like some of you might like that hole more than the hole you oh chose. Hey, sure, God. why not? I'll give a shot. The hole Did we is choose the wrong hole. Greener <laughs> on the other side. Not for me. Uh, There's no glory hole movie. Nothing like what that. There is. There is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what it's called. Glorious. Glorious. There you go. New, That's yeah. Rebecca McKendry. Rebecca McKendry, yeah. Josh Hole, and a couple other people wrote it. Yep. Josh Hole. Really? Of course. <laughs> For real? You're saying H U L L. H U L L. But yeah. it sounds oh, like okay. so not Josh Hole. 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 Yeah. Hole. <laughs> yeah. I was like, are you fucking with me? Is no. his name really Josh Hole? <laughs> Josh Hole. No. Hole. H U L L. Yeah. What's his name from True Blood? Um, 
Is yeah. it? Yeah. I, I just don't remember. Bold, that guy so. from, yeah. Oh, yeah. And J.K. Simmons plays a voice of, uh, uh, of a, uh, uh, whatchamacallit? The hole. The thing well, the I hole. mean, technically, what's a what's, uh, Lovecraftian beast? <laughs> yep. That lives in a hole, in a yeah, glory in hole. In a glory hole. There you go. We probably sold okay, that. Well, <laughs> yeah, now I need to watch it. It's on Shudder. It's on Shudder. Yeah. It's on Shutter. We're doing our part. Oh, uh, the dude from True Blood, Steven something. Steven Moyer? Yeah. No, 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 oh, not, not him. him. Not him. Uh, Sookie's brother. Oh, yeah. Don't Jason, know that guy's um, name. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Man, I knew it at one point because mm-hmm. he was in Dead Silence. Yeah. Big movie star. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah Dead sure, Silence. Sure now he's in yep. Glorious, a movie about <laughs> a Lovecraftian entity that lives in a glory hole. Spags <laughs> Getty <laughs> writes in. <laughs> And says, uh, this is about the hole. He says, now I saw this at the cinema when it came out in 2001. It's certainly something a little different, and I must admit I enjoyed it. I rewatched it recently on TV all these years later and felt the same way. Old Spags will give it a solid 7 out of 10 and a firm (laughs) recommendation. Dig in. Spags, you went all the way up to oh seven out of ten. Seven out of ten. Old, old Spags. Old Spags. Spags. Oh my god, that's my favorite. Yeah, old Spags. Old Spags. <laughs> well, thank you all. Thank you all for writing in. For writing in, we, we appreciate, appreciate it. it. Especially old Spags. <laughs> old Spags. Old Spags. <laughs> who's been writing in for fifty it. years? <laughs> and now we're gonna go <laughs> around. Been here in fifty years. <laughs> Well, now that you you probably want to hear what we thought of the Wolf Man, so we're gonna go around the table, starting with Michaela. What did you think about 2010's The Wolfman, directed by Joe Johnston? I think yes, the, yes. I think we're all the, fucking the, manic on this episode for some reason, but um, I mean, I love I love werewolf movies, and so I have a very low low threshold for enjoying them. Um, and I do love the original Wolfman. It's something I watch usually every Halloween because it has like the good spooky atmosphere and the yeah, good soundtrack, yeah. and it's like I go more for atmosphere during Halloween time than content with movies. Yeah. Um, like I don't watch The Shining at Halloween. To me, that's like no, a winter. It's a winter movie. Yeah, it's yeah. a winter yeah. movie. It's not a Halloween. Movie. I watch Sleepy Hollow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like I'm more about atmosphere than anything. And so this movie has great atmosphere and beautiful production design. And like I said, some scenes were just so painterly looking, and it's great. It that's is because somebody went to a computer and painted them. Yeah, on which the like damn screen. I love it. It looks great. And <laughs> I, I mean. I don't know how you would do this. I mean, the editing and the way it's assembled is a problem. But, like, assuming production went well on this movie, I don't know how else you'd do this type of movie better. Like, you're not going to get better than, like, a $150 million budget, right? Like, I mean, I guess Rick Baker is how you get better. But I I enjoy it for what it is. I'm grateful we ever got it because I don't see it ever happening again. Mm-hmm. Um, it definitely has its problems, but at least it's gory and it's violent and it has a lot of action, even if it is WWE action. <laughs> it's got a lot going on and it it has enough good stuff to carry it over the mm-hmm. line, even though it does overstay its welcome and it does have a lot of editing problems. I think there's enough good stuff here to enjoy. And if nothing else, it's a time capsule for like a... a what could have been so <laughs> um i would definitely check it out uh holly would you think yeah um i think with i think with this movie oh sorry can i tell my date story if i was gonna tell, tell my your date, date story. story oh i was dating a guy and we'd probably been dating for like six or seven months when this movie came out in february 2010 i remember because mm-hmm. it's right around valentine's mm-hmm. day and i said all i wanted to do for valentine's day was go see this movie and he thought i was joking so we didn't go see it for valentine's <gasps> day and then i broke up with him a few weeks later <laughs> there we go and this was a contributing factor because i was like no i was like I'm serious. Like I like horror movies. I want to go see that horror movie. Six for months and you thought you were joking. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, bye. and I was like, okay, no, like, like this is actually something really important to me, and you thought it wasn't serious. Okay, yeah. well, this ain't gonna work. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, So this movie wow. contributed to a breakup Yo, in my life. So we got the yeah. the yeah. romance in mailbag and yeah. the breakup and yeah. all. Yep. Yeah. Thanks to the wolf yeah. man. There Sorry, Holly. Back to you. <laughs> no, no, no. That's fine. No, six <laughs> months and he thought you were joking. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Um. I think with I think with this movie, um, if it hadn't traded hands with directors, traded scripts, editing, I, I mean, there's definitely problems. But taking all of that into consideration, and this is what we got, is pretty solid. Um, I think it's I completely agree with you. The atmosphere of this movie is just fucking perfection. It's beautiful. It's so gorgeous. I love the I love the lighting. Uh, I love the scenery. It's it's exactly how I want a Wolfman movie to look. Um, I think Benicio del Toro was a great choice. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if it was like an acting choice or I don't know if he was directed wrong. I don't know what it is. There is something off, 
um, because I think he could have been better, but I still think he was a, the right choice. I yeah. Is it? He's just not. He's acting. He's not acting in the action movie. Yeah, right. Yeah. He's I, in there. The, that. The, he's the, in the, the, the serious dramatic. I think, yeah. 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 I think so. And you know, like we said, that there. This is a sleepy movie. Like for a lot of it, is there's action and there's some gore and there's you know transformations but in the midst of that it is a sleepy movie and, it, and you know, i slept a little bit mm-hmm. but um yeah but you've been out for like you. a month yeah okay, yeah no. <laughs> but i remember when i initially saw this i thought it was sleepy then too mm. there it, it it's too long for one yeah mm. and you made us watch the long version <laughs> thanks Colin. um it almost feels like a season of television yeah. like condensed down into a movie i agree yeah. you know, season yeah. should be condensed down in a movie mm. okay anyway okay um, but I mean, all that said, I still really enjoy this movie. I, I wish we would have gotten the Rick Baker transformation, but we didn't, this is what we got. And I, I still appreciate what we got. I still enjoy it. Um, I like, I like a good wolf, werewolf movie too. So I'm going to recommend it. I've, I've always, I've always thought this was one of probably one of the better ones. I think. Mm-hmm. What was your date story? Unremarkable. Yeah, no, it was just, it was just me and Max went to see it. Um, yep. X. So this is so 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 no, that's the true curse of this movie. Yeah. You see this oh, movie no, on a curses. date with somebody, you're breaking up. That's, oh no, that's the curse. Oh no, we gotta send a warning. Oh though. god. <laughs> Go back in time and undo it. Hide your wife. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I'm sorry. That's anyway. right, Michael. Michael's yeah. out there going like, "Oh shit, my days are." Sorry, are we did not curse you. <laughs> no, this movie no, cursed no. you. No, no, sorry, um, but I recommend it. Uh yeah, good stuff. Sean, what did you think? What's up? <laughs> um, as I've always said, famously, famously, <laughs> and quote me on it. Uh, werewolf movies are not exactly my thing. I like uh, there's a few of them that I I like and respect, but other than that, it's just not my cup of tea. So when you sit me down and tell me you're, we're gonna watch a two hour and fifteen gothic werewolf movie. I'm not excited at all. Unfortunately, this movie to me, it doesn't feel like real. It doesn't feel solid. It doesn't feel like it's there. Like there is so much to me. I I see so much and I'm going to stick with it. I see so much digital in this movie, not just in transformation scenes and fight scenes and stuff like that, but they have enhanced, they've done something to just the surrounding area of this. Every shot feels like it's composed in a computer rather than on a camera. And But that's how we make all movies now. But that doesn't mean I have to like it. Or, but and that, when we it's don't a Marvel movie, We it's don't necessarily different. all make all those movies, uh, make all movies like that now. I don't think. Um, but it's also like, I'm not, uh, it's sleepy. I'd say boring at certain points. Maybe it's because that I know, like we discussed earlier that we're, I think ahead of where the character is. And so I'm constantly waiting for them to catch up to where I am or where, like, I mean, where we think it's going to go, which where is where it ends up going. Mm -hmm. So it takes for me too long to get there. I have problems with just how things were pulled off in this movie, story wise and all. Um, I it's this it's probably all more me than the movie. I'll give it that. Uh, uh, I'm the problem, but uh, this one's just not for me. I I, I can't do it. Um, so I I won't recommend the Wolfman. Um, yeah, there's not there's not enough life in this in this Wolfman for me, unfortunately. But uh, so I'm gonna pass, Colin. Tell us about your favorite movie ever that I just <laughs> that I just said that I don't like very much. Well, I mean, I think, yeah, I guess I'm on the opposite side of the fence from where you are because yes. I think uh, you know you give me a gothic horror movie uh, that somebody actually went and spent a hundred and right. right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I could live in these sets. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is where, like I smell a mansion in fog. Yeah, I know. It's like that. So that's catnip. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, it's a Wolfman movie. They treated the Wolfman. I think it was cool. I saw things like I said with the you know the escalation of it that I hadn't seen before and kind of wanted to see. It was like oh, I'm finally getting it. Uh, so I guess maybe that's where I was coming from going into it. And we're talking about a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. You know, 
we're nerding out on uh, things behind the scenes uh, that affected the movie. But I think when I first saw it, you know, you'd heard it, that it was a troubled production. And then you go sit in, in the theater and watch it. And I'm like, this seems fine. Like I followed it. It was like, everything seemed to be working. I liked the dialogue and it felt like it had been like researched and, you know, characters are speaking in appropriate, you know, cadences and, and using uh, dialects and, and uh, vocabulary uh, of the time. And that also works with me. I like that. So it was like, it was like going to treat it serious, you know, um, of Universal, so I'm a big fan, obviously, of the, the, the 30s Universal movies. There's right? Frankenstein Head right over there. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is. Uh, Boris Karloff, Frankenstein Head in the corner, in the basement. Um, and Universal, other folks have tried to do, you know, the, the Bram Stoker's Dracula and I guess uh, uh, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Those are the Columbia movies, right? Mm. And uh, Wolf was also the Columbia. That was their werewolf movie, or, uh, a Wolfman movie. Hammer has done mm -hmm. has done them. Um, but to me, like the two that I would say are like you know like the my favorite of the modern day uh, gothic Universal horror movies are, and they're from Universal. Was uh, the 1979 Dracula. And the 2010, the Wolfman, I'm like, that's a double feature for me. You know, like yeah. that's, you know, I'm like, I, I love both of those. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I know Universal also did the mummy twice. Uh, you know, there was the Brendan Fraser one, but to me, that's not, that's not the mummy. It's though. an it's a completely action different movie. Type it's of an yeah. Indiana Jones yeah. movie. So it doesn't even yeah. feel like it's horror. I yeah, mean, I'm no, not saying that this not. is scary, but at least it's, you know, it's a monster movie, right. you know, which is what, you know, the Wolfman, I think, is supposed to be. So um, and I like uh, Invisible Man mm -hmm. a lot, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it seems like it's in a different category because it's right. much smaller and you know right um yeah like the the <laughs> that invisible man would join up with the bigger um avengers of monsters yeah and, maybe yeah. and they changed you know like the you know it's not a mad scientist you know drinking a, a flask right, and, yeah. and doing his thing um I watch it. so yeah i mean i guess uh i would say 100 percent. this is one of my favorite werewolf movies uh of all time uh, I'm not saying it's a perfect movie. Right. I think, uh, unfortunately, the more that I watch it, and I think that's also because I'm trying, like, I know there's a different movie in there somewhere. Right. Mm. And so I'm trying to figure out what that movie was. And so I'm pulling it apart. And as you start to pull it apart, you're like, oh, no, I'm actually seeing, you know, the spreadsheet. Oh, no, put it back, put it back. It. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it might be losing, you know, it's like it's uh, coherency a little bit for me that way. But I think if you're going into it for the first time, it's a rewarding experience. Uh, you know, it's a big, big scale uh, Hollywood werewolf, you know, Wolfman werewolf movie. Uh I know I just said that. I, I don't know if that's like, you know, it's like, well, it's a big fantasy movie. You should love it. Uh, <laughs> but I'm into werewolves. So uh, it was great. Werewolves and vampires and mummies and, you know, all that oh stuff. My. That's right. So I would recommend The Wolf Man. Next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by. John. Uh. Do you know what we're watching next week? Yes. What are we watching? It's something I've picked twice before. <laughs> but has never actually made its way to the bar. Uh, we're going to pick up the pace a little bit. We're going to watch Action USA next week. Oh, oh okay. yeah, you right. have picked it twice. I've picked this twice before, yes, and yeah. we've always said, we've been like, ah, I feel like watching something else. And then else. you call no. an audible. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Next okay. week, I feel like watching All right. Action USA. Action USA. All right. All right. I'm trying to remember if the audience has heard you, you say, like, we're doing it, and then, I like, think, a different once, episode comes I out. I think <laughs> once they've heard me actually say it, and then a different episode so came out. So now on. they're like, mm-hmm, sure. Yes, sure. Like, sure we may, we no re record the end of the show, so it's not. I'm the boy who cried. Yeah. I'm the boy who cried. <laughs> I'm the boy who called action. <laughs> Mine's better. That one better. There you go. <laughs> All right. So next week's movie is if you're doing your homework, Action USA. As of right now. <laughs> <laughs> TBT. Maybe they've already watched it. They yeah. were waiting. They're right. like, yeah. they're like, oh yeah. So they're like, yeah. Well, you're six months behind, Sean. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, the basement is going dark.